many of us in this generation are what you can call as midnight children. That is, we are post-1947, some of us are post-Republic. And we didn't know what it was to be part of colonial India and a war-ravaged economy. So what we have been looking at is really the Nehruvian India. You know, it's an India which is looking forward to being against colonialism, to be in favor of reaching the commanding heights. And shortages didn't bother us because we were children of Nehru. And all our parents would have been involved in the freedom struggle in some form or the other. And we were building a greater nation. So when people do talk about shortages, it's only much later that it starts affecting us. I mean, oh, it really hits us badly and that would really come up to about 1970 or 75 or even much later, not before that. On the question of licensing and the kind of licensing Raj that we had under the industrial licensing policy, the last amendment to that I think takes place in 1973. But it starts with the second planning, which is the Mahalnobis model with import substitution. The general idea was to look at things um, in terms of building a diversified base in a capital scarce country. Because there was a lot of labor, and so we felt labor is very important. So we'll sort of implicate the labor surplus model. And the emphasis was that we create more supply and demand will automatically be created. But in, again, if I look at it in terms of a timeline, it was what was coming up between then, say by 75 and by the mid 80s or 85, was the fact that our industries had created a lot of inefficiencies. We were technologically dated, absolutely dated. And this, a large part of it was in the public sector enterprises. You know, our phones were archaic. Our uh, HL, that plane, I didn't think flew for years together. It just started flying now. And one always wondered what was happening. But that was not the concern so much as the fact that with the question of bank nationalization and more and more spread of the financial institution, there was a tremendous increase in corruption. So inefficiency went with corruption. And the corruption seemed to be part, if you're part of the bureaucracy, and if you're part of the political setup and the government setup, then that's the way you know the money would be done, and that's the way the licensing would take place. And only a few privileged companies would get their licenses. And this was brought out as early as 1967 by the Hazari Committee report. You know, and immediately after the Hazari Committee report uh, came the Subimal Dutt Committee report, and. Hazari committee report talked in terms of the need for giving up this licensing system and allowing for market forces to come in. And Hazari was the professor of industrial economics in Bombay University and also someone who was um, involved in, uh, who became the deputy governor of the Reserve Bank of India. He died very young. And there's a very interesting report because Bombay University also brought out the criticism against the Mahalobus which never was allowed to take it up. In Bangalore, we used to have this forum of free enterprise very close to the Swatantra party. And then we had people like B.R. Shanoi. And then we had Brahmanan. These are all very well economists, known economists. But it's surprising that this debate on why the Mahalnabis model never took place is something that makes interesting uh, reflections now. The important point that was never emphasized was the fact that you have to be open mainly for technology and technological change and for understanding how things can come in. Because openness means competition and market factors functioning. And this is what Hazari had emphasized right in 1967. The Subimal Dutt Committee report that came in a little later, which is, I think, I get the dates slightly mixed up. The, the Hazari Committee came in 67 and the Dutt came in 69. And the Dutt's response was not one of markets. The, he, the Dutt committee emphasized more the reason for prevention of concentration of economic power. So the licensing had created a concentration of economic power and from the Dutt committee in 73 and 69 was the beginnings of the MRTP, the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act. And the MRTP was a structural response to a structural situation. It was a structuralist act. 
to the industrial licensing policy. It was not a market-oriented act that came up. And following that came the G.V. Ramakrishna Committee report, which again started emphasizing the need for liberalizing and looking at it. Now, it, I think the nail was hit on the head by the first Narsimham Committee report, which started saying that we have to start liberalizing. And we had the Alexander Committee report. And India, look at it. We started in 67. The final liberalization takes place in 1991. So there's a whole long process that has been that has taken place. 